Well, good afternoon. I'm very pleased to be joined uh, today by Prince George's County Executive Angela Alsobrooks and Dr. Mohan Suntha, who's the president and CEO of the University of Maryland Medical System. As of this morning, Prince George's County has had 3,875 cases of COVID-19 and Maryland has 14,775 confirmed cases. In the past 35 days, 631 Marylanders have lost their lives to this deadly virus. 3,325 coronavirus patients have been hospitalized and uh, 1,432 patients are currently hospitalized, including 905 acute care patients and 527 intensive care patients. Today, uh, we have surpassed 27,000 cases in the national capital region and 1,159 people have died in Maryland, D.C. and Virginia. This deadly virus continues to spread in every single jurisdiction in the state but the highest concentration of cases in Maryland is right here in Prince George's County. 37 days ago, I launched an unprecedented public health surge plan by enacting an executive order directing the Maryland Department of Health to open closed hospital facilities and to take other measures necessary to immediately increase our capacity by an additional 6,000 beds in order to meet the projected demand by this escalating virus. The very first suggestion I had in our first meeting discussing this topic uh, with our team that first day was, uh, why don't we reopen uh, the Laurel Hospital? And here we are today at the newly launched Laurel Medical Center. This renovated and reconfigured facility will now provide an additional 135 beds, including 35 intensive care beds to treat patients infected with COVID-19. The Laurel Medical Center is being staffed by nearly 400 contractual medical professionals and healthcare workers who will be managed by the University of Maryland Medical System. This hospital first opened in 1978, which was the year that my father was elected as the county executive of Prince George's County. Over the years, this facility helped save many lives uh, before it was downsized and downgraded. But now with its rebirth, it is once again going to help us save lives, not just here in Prince George's County, but throughout the National Capital Region. Now, making this happen so quickly, months ahead of schedule, was a huge undertaking involving many, many people. And I just want to take a moment to thank uh, Dennis Schrader, who's the Chief Operating Officer of the Maryland Department of Health and his entire team. Dr. Mohan Suntha and all the folks at UMS and the Prince George's Hospital Center. And especially I wanna thank County Executive also Brooks and all of the local leaders for their incredible partnership. On Friday, we will be introducing our Maryland Strong Roadmap to Recovery, a safe, effective, and gradual plan which will allow us to reopen, to rebuild, and to recover just as soon as it is safe for us to do so. This recovery plan, which has been developed over many weeks in consultation with our coronavirus response team of doctors and public health experts, has four essential building blocks that are needed to be solidly in place before we can be in position to begin lifting restrictions. First, expanding our testing capacity Second, increasing hospital surge capacity. Third, increased supply of PPE. And fourth, a robust contact tracing operation. 
Our teams have been making significant progress in each of these criteria. On Monday, we announced a major breakthrough on the most critical part of both our recovery plan for Maryland and the reopening guidelines uh, the president released a week ago, which is the capability of doing widespread testing. Maryland has successfully expanded our testing capability by over 5,000% over the past month. We've completed more than 76,000 tests to date. Here in Prince George's County, the Maryland National Guard, in partnership with the Maryland Department of Health, County Executive Alsa Brooks, and the uh, Prince George's County Health Department est established the state's very first uh, coronavirus drive-through screening and testing location at FedEx Field in Landover. And we have established drive-through centers all across the state, including at our uh, VEEP stations. Last week, we secured 40,000 additional tests. We invested two and a half million dollars to help the University of Maryland uh, use cutting edge robotics to uh, build their capacity in order to handle the ability to handle 20,000 tests per day. And on Saturday, through the success of our Operation Enduring Friendship, we received a payload of lab gun COVID-19 PCR test kits from a South Korean company called Lab Genomics, which will give Maryland the capability of performing a half a million coronavirus tests. This 500,000 test capacity uh, is equal to the total amount of testing that has com been completed by four of the top five states in America added together. We had a second plane load from Korea Air land at BWI this morning with another payload. A couple of days ago, uh, on Wednesday actually, we had an offer from both the vice president and the president saying that they would now agree to allow the state of Maryland to access the countless federal labs that are located in our state. Access to these federal labs can be key to utilizing the 500,000 tests that we acquired from South Korea. And we are looking forward to moving forward on this very important potential federal state collaboration. Second building block of our roadmap to recovery is uh, what we're focused on here today increasing hospital surge capacity. In addition to the Laurel Medical Center here in Prince George's County, uh, the 250 bed field hospital at the Baltimore Convention Center has been completely staffed and set up and will be admitting those patients who no longer require a hospitalization but need a location to complete their care and to fully recover. Here in Prince George's County, we have also opened the first beds at Adventist Fort Washington Medical Center. We're adding additional beds, including uh, intensive care beds to that location, as well as to the uh, UM Prince George's uh, Hospital Center in Cheverly. Uh, we're expanding uh, capacity with 22 surge response tents across the state, including at Doctors Hospital, Doctors Community Hospital in Lanham, and at Southern Maryland Hospital Center in Clinton, at Holy Cross Hospital, and Washington Adventist Hospital in White Oak. And uh, also, along with 100 additional beds at Jessup and at Hagerstown to address the needs of corrections and detention centers. We're now on track to not only reach, but actually exceed our goal of 6,000 additional beds by reaching a surge capacity of more than 6,700 new beds in the coming weeks. Uh, the third building block of our Maryland Strong Roadmap to Recovery is more access and availability of personal protective equipment or PPE, which is a problem that has plagued not only us but states all across America and countries around the globe. We have had a multi-agency task force working literally around the clock, day and night, seven days a week, focused on this issue. And while the problem's not solved, uh, they have made and are continuing to make great progress with large deliveries coming to our warehouses on a daily basis, including 5.9 million surgical masks we've reached, recently acquired, including one million masks from our friends in Korea, 
uh, 1 million KN95 masks, including 1 million from Korea, and 705 N95 masks, uh, 2.3 million surgical gowns, 1.1 million face shields, and an additional 1,000 uh, additional ICU beds. The fourth and final building block of our recovery and reopening plan is a robust contact tracing operation, which will enable us to investigate every positive case as we fight our way out of this pandemic. We already have 250 contract tracers working with our state and local health departments across the state. And this morning, we authorized a contract with NORC, the National Opinion Research Center, which is the nation's oldest and largest university-based research firm, operated by the University of Chicago with corporate offices in Bethesda. Under this agreement, we will quadruple our present disease investigation capability and ramping up to be able to contact 1,000 uh, new cases per day. We are also today launching a new state-of-the-art contact tracing platform for the COVID-19 virus called COVID Link, which will assist in monitoring and collecting information about people who test positive for COVID-19 and individuals who they have come in close contact with to determine who needs to self-isolate and any other further steps that need to be taken to ensure that the virus is not spreading further. This innovative COVID Link platform will utilize medical data from the uh, Chesapeake Regional Information uh, System for our patients, it's called CRISP. Uh, Maryland's 1,000 contact tracers will be trained on this new technology to make sure that all information is collected in accordance with all regulations and guidelines for the security and privacy of all medical data. I wanna thank Rhode Island Governor uh, Gina Raimondo and Mayor Stephen Adler of Austin, Texas who consulted with us on this initiative. I just completed another call today, our 16th call with the nation's governors. And as the chairman of the NGA, I continue to encourage uh, states and counties and municipalities to work together to share best practices in order to identify the most effective and efficient ways to combat this pandemic. Um, our entire team has been working hard and making incredible project, uh, progress on all four of these necessary building blocks uh, so that as our numbers start to improve and look better, we will be in a position to safely reopen our state and get people back to work. With these crucial components now firmly in place, on Friday, we will be introducing our Maryland Strong Roadmap to Recovery, which will lead us safely out of this pandemic into a brighter and more hopeful future. And finally today, I wanna to just take a moment to recognize the many countless small businesses that have stepped up uh, during this crisis to adapt their operations in order to help those in need. And uh, you may have seen when I came out here, I was wearing this Maryland Strong mask uh, that I wore to the press conference today. It's made by Route One Apparel which was started here in Prince George's County in College Park in 2010 by a University of Maryland student, Allie Von Paris. Last month, Allie and her company generously donated their entire inventory of fanny packs to healthcare workers on the front lines, and then they pivoted their entire operation to making face masks. And uh, so they're available at, uh, at uh, Route One Apparel's website. And for every mask that anyone buys, they also then donate a mask to Maryland healthcare workers and first responders. So much like um, the, the uh, opening of this hospital uh, that we're here for today, it's just another uh, kind of shining example of the very spirit of our Maryland Unites initiative. It shows how anyone uh, how any institution or any small business or any individual Marylander can be a part of our efforts uh, to save lives and to defeat this hidden enemy. And it is yet, yet another reminder that we really are all in this uh, together. 
And with that, I want to turn it over to the great county executive of Prince George's County, my friend, Angela also Brooks, who has been a terrific partner and is doing a wonderful job leading her state in this crisis. Thank you, Angela. Good afternoon. Um, I first want to begin by uh, welcoming the governor home. I always get, a, I'm always thrilled to, uh, to do that. And so I want to say welcome home, uh, Mr. Governor. And uh, I'm really pleased today to be joined also by my partners. Uh, our county council chair, Todd Turner is here. Vice Chair Calvin Hawkins is here. Council Member Tom Dernoga I know is here as well. Uh, Senator Jim Rosapep is here, as well as Delegate Mary Lehman. Want to thank, as well as the uh, also the Mayor of Laurel. Also, uh, want to say thank you so much uh, for for uh, for joining us today uh, as well, um, Craig Mo. Um, and so I want to thank uh, Mr. Governor for uh, for being here and to say uh, how much we appreciate your leadership. Uh, how much we also appreciate all of the swift action that has been taken um, since our county and our state uh, was engulfed in this crisis regarding the coronavirus. Uh, you heard the uh, governor say it a moment ago, um, but we have lost here 152 souls to the coronavirus. Uh, we also have 3,868 confirmed cases of the coronavirus here in Prince George's County. Uh, the largest case count in the state. And I think it is so important uh, to note now, I believe that the governor has led in this way, um, and I'm really proud to be a part of a state that understands these are not cases, these are people. These are humans, these are our family members, our friends, these are our neighbors who we are talking about. And so the urgency with which he has uh, tackled this has really uh, been amazing and we are really grateful for it. Uh, you heard that the governor right away upon hearing about these cases allowed for Prince George's County uh, to be the first place in the state that stood up a screening and testing site uh, as we understood that there are too many in our county and in our state who are without health insurance. And so that facility would allow us, the 50,000 plus individuals in Prince George's County who are not insured would have the opportunity to be screened and tested. Uh, and treated for this virus. And so we are really grateful uh, that that site, which opened on March 30th, so far has screened over 800 individuals, tested 721 patients. Uh, and this site has really helped us to expand health care and expand access to some of our uh, residents who lack health insurance and who don't have access to doctors, but who certainly need that help. Um, I'd also like to thank the state uh, of Maryland's health department, which has been really instrumental in helping us to facilitate that site, as well as the National Guard and the United States Army. They've been wonderful partners. Uh, and we've seen also the need for additional testing. So as of last week, we expanded the capacity of that particular testing site uh, to be able to, to administer at least 200 tests per time we were there. We're there three times a week. Uh, so 600 tests during that week, and we know that we will be able to continue uh, to expand the testing capability thanks to the efforts of the governor and also should say our first lady, uh, who is amazing as well. We want to thank her also uh, for, the, for the work that she did in getting us those additional tests. Uh, their work at FedEx will also help us in contact tracing, uh, which is a really crucial part of our efforts to flatten the curve, not only in Prince George's, but we know that we will also flatten the curve throughout the state. And in conjunction with that, I've been able to, uh, to order an executive order regarding uh, the wearing of face masks and uh, ensuring that all of our essential workers, uh, as well as those who are at our grocery stores and those who are driving transit uh, in our county would be safe as well as we stop the spread of, of germs uh, and stop the spread of this virus that is killing uh, and, and making folks ill. Now, as we approach the surge, uh, we knew that we would also need to expand hospital capacity. Prince George's County's infrastructure is new and transitioning, uh, and so we knew that there would be a great need to expand hospital bed space. Uh, we knew that we would also need additional ICU space, uh, and so we want to thank the governor for, uh, for the additional beds that are open here, the 135 beds. And I have to tell you something uh, that he said I love when we talked. He said, you know, I'm native Prince Georgian, and so when I heard that we needed those beds without a second thought, I said, open up Laurel Hospital, you know, get, get, let's get it open. And so uh, he was already familiar with Laurel, so now we are reopening floors three, four, and five uh, here at the Laurel Hospital, which will lessen the stress on many of our existing medical facilities as we continue this fight. 
And I'm glad that the governor saw what we did, and that is that this hospital presents for all of us a really wonderful opportunity uh, to be able to handle the surge it is, as it occurs. We know that we are really still very much in the middle of this. Uh, and that we are, will have great need in the coming weeks to be able to care for Prince Georgians in Prince George's County. And so to expand that bed space was really critically important to all of us. And finally, I say that as our citizens, uh, they have many, many needs, and we are facing so many uncertainties at this time. Um, but I am proud to say that we are a strong county, that this is a strong state, and with strong and compassionate leadership, the governor, uh, I will, and as well as all of the other leaders who are here throughout the state, all of our collective efforts as a state and as a county will ensure that we will come through this stronger than we started. Uh, I want to thank you again, for Mr. Uh, Mr. Governor, for being here. I want to thank you for all the accessibility. The administration has been wonderful. I also want to thank Dr. Santa, who's been amazing uh, for all of us. Uh, and we will get through this together. Thank you so much. So good afternoon. Uh, my name is Mohan Suntha, and I'm proud to serve as the president and CEO of the University of Maryland Medical System. Let me begin by saying, Governor, thank you. Thank you for demonstrating profound leadership as we've started into this health care crisis. And the way you've led us through this crisis, I think, is a phenomenal example of, of what it means to demonstrate leadership at, at, the most, at the time of greatest need. County Executive also Brooks, you, as a partner, uh, you have been a staunch advocate uh, for the needs of the, of the community of Prince George's County. And together, I think today, uh, what we're announcing here in Laurel, I think represents the power of partnership and the power of commitment uh, to serve the greater good. Uh, it is, uh, in fact, as Governor tell, uh, described, a little over a month ago, uh, we got the call that said uh, that Governor would like to see us open Laurel back up let it become a resource uh, given uh, the potential needs that we would be facing uh, across the state and very specifically here in Prince George's County. And so he set upon uh, us the expectation of turning on this organization in, in a month's time. And thanks to the passion and energy and commitment of partnership uh, from state level uh, to the county level to the unbelievable workforce uh, that represents uh, the leaders at uh, the University of Maryland, Prince George's Capital Region Medical Center system. Uh, we were able to accomplish that today, and today represents uh, a step forward in how we are addressing uh, this healthcare crisis. As the county executive described, uh, this allows us to expand the capacity to be able to serve the needs of citizens of the county here in the county. But we also uh, want uh, folks to appreciate that it also provides an incredible resource to the entire state of Maryland. Because what we've realized here in the state is exactly what we've seen around the country. And that as we look at COVID-19 and its incidents and what we've experienced is that the surge effect does not hit us all at once. And for our health system, 13 hospitals across the state of Maryland, we've been able to leverage the resources that define our health system by bringing to bear human capital, human and resources, uh, and technology to where the need is greatest. And so while that need today is here uh, disproportionately in Prince George's County, what we know is that as we get on the backside of the peak of the surge here in Prince George's County, we'll be able to leverage this research resource for the, for the benefit of citizens across the state of Maryland. And so thank you uh, on behalf of our entire organization. Um, I also want to recognize the unbelievable leadership of the University of Maryland Capital Region Health System, Dr. Joe Wright, Dr. Trudy Hall, Min Godwin. Uh, they have put forth an unbelievable energy and effort while serving the healthcare needs of the, of the patients and the community members who are coming to us to make sure that this uh, effort could in fact be operationalized in the time frame that we all worked hard to accomplish. So on behalf of the health system, thank you. And we look forward to continuing to serve the needs of the county and of the state. Thank you, Madam. With that, we'd uh, be happy to take a few questions. Governor, can I look? ask you about, uh, you more about the second uh, airplane that came in? 
Um, can't tell you a whole lot about it other than uh, uh, I was in, a, uh, in an important uh, meeting earlier, but the First Lady did go out and greet the Koreans again, once again, on the tarmac, and uh, they just brought some additional supplies that are going to come in handy. No, it wasn't. Those, those masks are a different uh, order. Governor, some of the governors in other states are making moves to reopen Georgia, as you know. Could you explain, if you can address the camera, yeah, sorry. Could, could you explain to area residents the downward trend that the White House plan says needs to be in place and where the DMV fits into that plan currently? So the... Um, the federal guidelines that were issued uh, last Thursday evening, I think, uh, call for downward trends in the numbers, particularly for hospitalizations and ICU uh, beds. And um, those are the things that we're looking at um, before you should even consider uh, the phase one of a reopening. And um, we are not at that point. And if you look at the uh, Maryland, uh, D.C., and Virginia area, we're, we're still, although we're hopeful that we're going to start to see some numbers level off, we're currently still on an upward tra trajectory rather than a downward tra trajectory. Part of that is because of the great work that we've done, because uh, we were early and aggressive in our efforts to, you've heard a lot about flattening the curve, and by flattening it, you also lengthen it. We didn't have the spike or the high, high numbers that you saw in other places. But well, I'm as anxious as anybody to get things open as quickly as we can. And I'm uh, concerned about the people who are not working and the small businesses, but we want to do it in a safe uh, way uh, because we can't have uh, an overload of our healthcare system. Well, I am, I am hopeful and uh, fairly confident the, the, the group effort um, between all of our hospital systems, our health department, all of our local government partners, uh, help from FEMA and uh, everybody else. I mean, it's been a tremendous effort. Adding 6,700 hospital beds in like 40 days is a pretty unbelievable accomplishment. Um, and lowering that spike so we didn't have the huge numbers. Um, Hopefully, we're not going to need to use all of those, but I think we're going to be in much, much better shape than some of these places where you saw people stacked up in the hallways and running out of ventilators and, and not having ICU beds. Sure, yeah, please. So, that, so opening this facility really helps the entire county. 135 additional beds with, I believe we have, Dr. Something, how many ICU beds? About 15? 35. 35 ICU beds as well. So what this means is when our, uh, when the surge continues to occur, it means that we don't have to send our patients out to uh, send them up to Baltimore or over to Washington, D.C. This means that we have the capacity now to have med surge beds right here, ICU beds with ventilators right here, and it means that we can serve the entire county. And as you've heard, we can also, this is also a resource for the entire state. So it is, expands bed capacity, not only in the county, but it also adds to the bed capacity for the state. And so this means that as, as the surge happens, our hospital readiness, we feel pretty confident about. Hey, So, so I want so thank you. I, I, first of all, I want to thank Dr. Ernest Carter and our health department. They have done a heroic job of responding to this virus. But one of the concerns we have is as the numbers start coming in and we collect data, we realize that men in particular uh, have really uh, succumbed to this virus in terms of the deaths that we've seen. So for example, we know that among uh, African American men, uh, about they account for about 64% of all of our deaths. We know that for uh, white men in our county, uh, they account for about 80% of the deaths in that population, as well as Hispanic men uh, who account for over 60% of the deaths in that population. And so we're very concerned that men have been waiting. Uh, Dr. Carter tells me that we ought to really uh, send home the message that if you're having symptoms, do not wait, because we were so distressed to learn uh, that at least a couple of our residents died at home last week. 
uh, because they waited too late to seek medical treatment. So we want to send the message that if you have those symptoms, do not wait. Uh, today, we also announced that you can now text 911 if you're unable to speak. You can now text 911 and we will get to you and get you the help that you need. But we don't want people waiting and we're very concerned that we're seeing that some of our men are waiting too late and are at home. Right, so what we described this morning was the early experience within our medical system. And the reason we described it as early is because we recognize where we are in uh, the peak relative to data that's come from other parts of the country with more mature experience. And so the point of what we were describing today is that while we see uh, differences in rates of infection based on race, Right now, we are not seeing differences based on in mortality and in hospital stay, but we know that's very early data compared to what you're seeing from around the country. So we would want we would not want anybody to misunderstand uh, that uh, that data. So I think uh, health systems from around the state are partnering in the way we've done it to this point with state officials, with county officials, with local health departments to ensure that we continue to maintain a focus on the needed resources based on the incidence of the disease that uh, we're able to, ex to understand now in our communities better than we were a few weeks ago as we expand our testing capacity outside the walls of the hospital, that will also allow health systems to better prepare the needed resources for what we have coming as we get on the backside of this peak. Yeah, that's a great question that I don't really know the answer to, and I'm not sure we have any any experts here that can answer the exact percentage of uh, what we need. But uh, there's been a uh, terrible shortage of PPE in uh, hospitals and systems and in states across the country. The uh, federal stockpiles were depleted, um, uh, and that's that's improving everywhere. We're getting more assistance from. Uh, FEMA, and we're getting more uh, companies ramping up production. We're buying things all over the world, so we have things from China, from Korea, from companies everywhere, but it's still not quite enough, and hospitals are still stretched with the stuff that they need. They're able to operate right now, but if we have a peak, we, we're still we're pouring stuff in literally every day and every night, uh, and sh it's going out the door as fast as it's coming in. So we're we're just, I would say, keeping up with a almost adequate supply but it, you know it's it's like digging in the sand we're going it, it goes in and out and we need we need more and uh, uh, the uh, the president's uh, finally utilizing the defense production act to start producing swabs which is good because there's there was only one company apparently in the world doing it it was in Italy and uh, Italy you know what happened there so they weren't doing it we've had a lack of supply of uh, things like masks which doesn't seem that complicated n95 masks but there's they don't have them anywhere in the country, so. But it's getting much, much better. Um, I don't have a percentage of where we are. It's we're we're at, we're feeling much more comfortable than we were. We've made huge improvements, but I would say we have a long way to go. Last question, please. Uh, yeah, let's just say that on uh, uh, a couple of days ago, when we announced that we had brought in. Uh, a half a million tests from Korea, and we're the only state in the America that has a half a million tests. And that was more than the top four of the five states in America have done in the past month and a half. Um, my phone was lighting up from every governor in America saying, how do we get some of those tests? Um, I I'm not sure what the answer to that question is, because I think we're the only state that Korea had 
made an agreement with. But we're going to try to help all of our everybody get here in the state of Maryland, first of all. But if we can help our neighbors and our other uh, governors, you know, find a way to help their states, we're going to do that too. Thank you, Thank you all very much. Thank you.